And welcome back to The Factor Uncensored. It was a quest to challenge yourself when it comes to racism, and now it's become a best-selling book. That book, Me and White Supremacy Workbook, was written by Arthur Layla Saad. Her goal was initially a social media challenge asking mainly white women to take a look inside and evaluate their own white privilege. From there, it was time to take a look at their role in the big picture. Are they complicit in white supremacy? That challenge, that book, that experience became a movement. You may have heard of it. Hashtag me and white supremacy. Joining us now here on The Factor Uncensored is author and speaker Layla Saad, who just landed in Houston, Russ Tien, who is on The Factor Uncensored. So tell us about this challenge. How did it get started first initially? Well, Isaiah, do you remember in 2017, the Unite the Right rally happened in Charlotte? Yes, Virginia. I remember that. Right, we all remember. That event triggered me deeply. And so I decided to write to my base, who were mainly white women. I wrote this letter to them called, I need to talk to spiritual white women about white supremacy. And it went viral. Mm -hmm. And a year later, I started wondering, what have they learned about themselves in white supremacy? And so one night, I was trying to fall asleep, couldn't. I started thinking, what have they learned? What is white supremacy? And I created this list of different aspects of white supremacy, created it into this 28-day challenge, threw it up on my Instagram page, and to date, almost 100,000 people have taken the challenge. And so when you initially got some of the responses from some of your viewers and readers out there, what were they saying? What were they admitting to? It was interesting what came out because a lot of people often assume that what, what white supremacy is, it's racial slurs, the N-word, it's the men marching with torches in Charlottesville. But what they actually found and what white supremacy actually is, it's this insidious underlying thing. It's, it seems like white privilege means that you lived a privileged life. Mm -hmm. But actually, it doesn't mean that. It doesn't mean that you've never had to struggle. It means you've never had to struggle because you're white. And so what was coming out was this understanding that it's more than the N-word. And how difficult was it for some of those people out there to admit that they had this in them? It was absolutely difficult for them to understand because a lot of them saw themselves as allies. They saw themselves as not racist. And so being, having to face that was, was definitely challenging for them. And the next step was creating a book, the workbook. That's right, yeah. Doing the work. That's right, we took it from the Instagram challenge to this self-published PDF workbook that, as I said, 100,000 people downloaded and, and did that workbook. Mm -hmm. And from there, what were you able to learn? What were you able to achieve with the people you were able to reach? Did they have that epiphany, that moment of enlightenment that, that changed them forever? Absolutely, I mean, they definitely found it hard. They were intimidated, overwhelmed, they felt unrewarded by it. But what tens of thousands of people found was that they now changed how they showed up in their relationships towards people of color um, and how they showed up in the world as, as actual allies. For those who will not accept that they may have this in their system, how can you reach those people? Absolutely. So this book is definitely for everybody who has white privilege to do, but I understand that not everybody gravitates to this work. And so it is my hope that those who do want to be on the right side of history, they do want to do the work, that they will go through the book and then they will be able to have those conversations with those, those people. And for those who are wondering, uh, and people hear it and it's thrown around, it was a phrase coined back in 1988 by an author, how damaging for those who practice white privilege or who, ha who may have white privilege yeah. and don't realize it, how damaging could it be to society or people of color? It's absolutely damaging for us. You know, we don't have that privilege, you know, and, and just for everyone to understand, what does it mean, white privilege? It was this term coined by Peggy McIntosh and it describes, she says, this invisible package of unearned assets that mm -hmm you can count on cashing in each day. And because it's invisible, you don't realize you have it. But we don't have it. We cannot move in the world in the same way that those who have white privilege can. Now, is this a book solely for those who are looking for redemption? Or is it for everyone who's ready to read it and apply it in their own particular uh, uh, life or situation that they're going through? It's definitely, as I said, for everybody who has white privilege to do. Um, but it's definitely so it ain't for me. It's not for you. <laughs> you might get a lot from it. What if I got black in term, it, Well, <laughs> <laughs> you might get a lot from it in terms of your understanding uh -huh. of these different terms. But it is for for white people and people with white privilege. Today. Does it feel like a burden though when you tell them this is what you're doing, this is what you're dealing with, fix it? 
they definitely find it challenging. It's not, you know, I don't sugarcoat it. It's hard work. It's definitely hard work. And really quick, you're at Brazos Bookstore tomorrow. What That's time right. here in Houston? 5 p.m. tomorrow, Brazos right. Bookstore. Thank you for joining us. Thank we appreciate it. Continue to do the work. Thank you.